Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a horror series, Masters of Horror, Sick Girl. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The episode begins with an insect being plucked by an unknown man. He starts experimenting on the bug, and comments that it will be quite a surprise to the person he plans to give it to. Ida is an entomologist who is so passionate about her job, that even her home has turned into an insect emporium. This has caused all her romantic prospects to be turned off. Case in point, her girlfriend just left a message on her voicemail, saying that her bugs are just too much, and she can't be in a relationship with her. Ida doesn't take the news well, and she cries herself to sleep that night. The next morning, she is still glum about the breakup while in her laboratory. Her coworker tries to cheer her up. He adds that girls will get understandably freaked out by her obsession with bugs, so she needs to tone it down. Ida is dismayed by this, because she wants to meet someone who will actually love her for her zaniness. He even suggests that she ask out the quiet brown-haired girl, who is always sketching in the lobby of their building. Meanwhile, a package containing the upgraded insect, arrives at Ida's apartment. Ida and her co-worker ride down the elevator together, and see the brown-haired girl at her usual spot in the lobby. He urges her to ask her out, so Ida slowly approaches the girl. But it's actually the brown-haired girl, who speaks up first. She doesn't make eye contact, as she rapidly says that she has seen Ida in the lobby before. Speaking faster than an average human, she barely lets Ida speak, just breezes through introducing herself as Misty, and asking out Ida on a coffee date. Ida is struck by shyness and stammers. To make matters worse, a spider starts climbing out of her lab coat pocket. She knows that girls find bugs creepy, so it lessens her self-confidence. Ida gives Misty an excuse, and makes a hasty exit. But right before the elevator doors close, she gets her first glimpse of Misty's face. She is very pretty with porcelain skin and bright blue eyes. She gives Ida a shy smile, and it completely steals her heart. That night, Ida comes home to her apartment building, and sees the landlady and her granddaughter. The granddaughter adores Ida, and likes dressing up as a ladybug, since insects interest her too. But the landlady is snooty, and disapproves of Ida keeping a bunch of insects as pets. Ida argues that pets are technically allowed in the building, and her insects are quieter and safer than dogs or goldfish. The granddaughter also pleads with the landlady to be more lenient, since she finds bugs to be wonderful creatures. She reluctantly lets Ida keep her pets, as long as they do not make any trouble for the other tenants. When Ida finally reaches her own apartment, she is delighted to discover that an anonymous someone has sent her a package containing an insect. The package had come from Brazil. This is the same insect that was experimented on at the beginning of the film. She does not know exactly what the insect species is, but this just makes Ida even more excited to have it. She names it Mick. The next day, she works up the courage to ask out Misty, who happily says yes. During lunch, Ida proudly tells her co-worker that she and Misty will be having dinner together that night. She also mentions that Misty likes drawing pixie women, and her obsession with pixies makes her even more attractive to Ida. While eating in a Chinese restaurant, she notices a bug in her bowl. The rest of the diners quickly flee in disgust, but Ida and her co-worker just discuss the bug's origins, theorizing that the bug probably came from China, which makes the restaurant's ingredients authentically Chinese too. Meanwhile, Mick escapes its container, and wanders around Ida's apartment. Soon after, it burrows inside Ida's pillow. Ida picks one of her favorite restaurants for her date with Misty. They are both nervous around each other. Misty shyly says that she finds Ida attractive, and this breaks the ice between them. They keep glancing at each other with affection. Misty shares that she thought of watching a movie together after dinner, but nothing seemed interesting in theaters right now. So she took the liberty of renting a movie about Pixies instead. She asks Ida if she has a DVD player they could use to watch the film. Ida is taken aback by this, because she has a lot of insects in her place, and she doesn't want to scare Misty away on their first date. But in the end, Ida wants to spend time with Misty, so she agrees to take her to her place. They go to Ida's place, and encounter the granddaughter in her ladybug costume. She introduces Misty to the child. The landlady calls for the granddaughter, and curiously looks at Ida and Misty. Once inside her apartment, Ida seems to be even more nervous than before. She hurriedly blocks the way to her bedroom, since all her pets are there, and she does not want Misty to see them. She awkwardly pours them a drink, and pops the DVD into the player in the living room. They both have a good time and are now more relaxed, but they are interrupted by a call from Ida's co-worker. She ducks into her bedroom to answer the call. He congratulates her for bagging Misty, but does agree that the pets in her bedroom may be a problem. Ida nervously returns to the living room, and discovers that Misty has fallen asleep on her couch. She decides to get a blanket and a pillow from her bedroom, 
so Misty can sleep comfortably. However, she doesn't know that Mick is hiding inside her pillow. While arranging the pillow under Misty's head, she wakes up with a start. Misty is touched that Ida had tucked her in, and the two share their twisted tongues. Things start getting hot and heavy between them, and Misty settles her head back on the pillow. While Ida massages her neck, the proboscis of the insect slowly creeps out and pierces Misty's ear. She disregards this, and the two spend the night together. The next morning, Ida wakes up on the couch and finds Misty inside her bedroom, looking at one of her bugs inside a terrarium. Ida braces for Misty's fear and disgust. But to her surprise, Misty actually loves the bugs. She reveals that her father is an entomology professor, who incidentally also taught Ida in college. Finally, Ida has found someone who isn't disgusted by her life's passion. Misty then notices the insect's empty container. Ida realizes that Mick has escaped. The two playfully look around her apartment together for Mick. But Ida's light push proves to be too much for Misty, and she almost falls to the ground. Misty also notices that some strange juice is coming from her ear. She feels sick and lightheaded, so Ida lets her sleep on her bed. Before closing her eyes, she looks at Ida with wonder in her eyes, not used to having a romantic partner who will stay with her through thick and thin. The next few days are blissful for Ida and Misty. Things are getting better and better between the two of them, and Ida is on cloud nine. However, Mick is still missing, and Ida shows her co-worker Misty's sketch of what Mick looked like. The co-worker is dumbfounded, because no insect in a known record looks like the sketch. Frustrated, Ida just changes the topic to her and Misty's burgeoning romance. He advises her to take things slow and not to be too available to Misty, so she can keep her coming back for more. Ida disagrees with this and says that she and Misty will go as fast or slow as they want. True enough, within a few days, Misty moves into her apartment. She's been feeling sick since she was bitten, but the joy of their new relationship has her glowing with happiness. But Misty doesn't tell Ida that she's been displaying some strange behavior. She keeps hearing scurrying noises, and she feels the uncontrollable urge to eat the worms that Ida feeds to her pets. Meanwhile, a landlady and her granddaughter see Mick scurrying along the hallway. She immediately identifies it as one of Ida's pets, so she knocks on Ida's door to tell her. This sight makes the landlady rush away. Later on, a dog goes missing in their building, presumably eaten by Mick. One day, Misty is cleaning up Ida's bedroom when she discovers that Mick has made a nest inside the pillow. She is about to call her about her discovery, but something seems to possess her. Misty's ear is now swollen and infected, with more juices oozing out of it. Her eyes look glazed, as she lies on the bed with her infected ear close to Mick's nest. Proboscis comes out again, and pierces Misty while she's sleeping. Ida receives a letter from the mysterious man, who mailed her Mick. The letter warns her that Mick is a dangerous species of insect that eats mammals. The sender seems familiar to her, but she couldn't place where she knew him. Despite how strange the letter is, she begins to believe it, because a dog had gone missing after Mick arrived. Mick was also not an identified species, and it doesn't have genitals as well. She is still reading the letter, as she walks into her apartment building. She realizes that the handwriting in the letter, looks similar to her former professor and Misty's father's handwriting. Misty greets her with a kiss, which is witnessed by the landlady and her granddaughter. The landlady is apoplectic with anger, and Misty, who looks pale and unwell, uncharacteristically starts mocking the landlady. Ida tries to be diplomatic, but the landlady is angry with her as well. She is sickened by their deviancy, and orders Ida to move out of her apartment within the week. This upsets Ida, she gets angry at Misty for laughing, while the landlady is insulting them. Misty blows up at her, and screams that she's stuck at home cleaning and doing laundry, and Ida is acting immaturely. Misty loses consciousness after her tirade, and she collapses. When she wakes up, she tells Ida that she had the strangest dream. In her dream, she was a fairy, and a large insect got on top of her and pierced her navel. The insect then inserted its hormone juices into her body. Misty thinks that her dream had something to do with the fact that her father, the professor, had never accepted her being a lesbian. Ida then gets a call from her coworker, saying that the anonymous sender had written a letter again. She immediately goes to the lab. This time, the anonymous man sent illustrations of Mick, along with information about its habit of feeding on birds and other mammals. What's more, it has the ability to impregnate other animals with its babies too. Ida quickly realizes that Mick had bitten Misty, and infected her, which is why she has been behaving strangely. Misty puts the pillow containing Mick between her legs, and the insect inseminates her. Afterward, she ventures into the hallway, and strikes up a conversation with the landlady. The landlady is repulsed by her, and calls her a pervert. Misty suddenly transforms into a half-human, half-insect hybrid, 
and throws the landlady from the second floor. Ida arrives home, and sees the landlady's dead body being carried out. Misty is acting happy about the landlady's death, and Ida quickly gets her back to their apartment. Deeply concerned, she calls her co-worker to her apartment. She confronts Misty, and tells her that she believes it was the professor, who had sent the insect. Misty already knows this. It turns out, her father found out that she had a crush on Ida, ever since she saw her in one of her father's classes. Repulsed by his daughter's unconventional desire, the professor sent Mick to Ida, and hoped that the insect would infect her, and keep her away from Misty. The co-worker arrives at the apartment, but is killed by Misty, who has transformed once again into an insect-like monster. Mick climbs up Ida's body, and inserts its proboscis into her ear, infecting her like it infected Misty. The movie ends with both women getting pregnant with Mick's babies. They are delirious with happiness, and are lounging on their couch wearing identical clothes. As they gleefully chatter about their impending delivery dates, Mick is inseminating them through their ears. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.